Welcome to Intro to LibreOffice Draw by the Mary F. English Program. LibreOffice is a free office suite, a lot like Microsoft Office, except it's totally free. You can go to LibreOffice.org and download it right now. In this presentation, we'll be talking specifically about LibreOffice Draw, which is the alternative to Microsoft Publisher. So this is the Draw interface, and the first thing you see when you start the program if you're used to using Microsoft Publisher, you'll notice that there isn't a handy wizard or template selector that pops up when you first start it. If you want to use something other than the standard 8x5x11, by by you'll have to go here to Format, to Page, and then customize the size of the paper you're going to use. As with all programs, I recommend the first times you use it, you go through, highlight each of these buttons, see what the shortcuts they recommend for them are and go through just do that for everything to get a sense of what each button does and where you can find it up here is a gallery bar you can go through and insert some pre-designed patterns some different bullet types and sound effects but you most likely will not need to insert sound effects into your draw document so okay that's nice but I really don't have a use for this bar so if you want to get rid of it you might think hey I'll go to view and remove it but there's no option in here to remove it if you want to get rid of it you have to go to tools and click the gallery button there we go okay so there's a lot of stuff in file most of its pretty standard you're open you're new save save as Export as PDF. PDFs are great. If you're going to be sending this file to somebody, you want to make sure that it's it's going to open exactly on their screen as you made it. Well, normally they'd have to have LibreOffice installed to view that, but if you export it as a PDF, then they don't have to have LibreOffice and they can view it perfectly from their computer. And that's pretty much all you need to know from here. Edit has your standard cut, copy, paste, undo, find, find and replace. I don't usually use this stuff so I don't think you'll need it if uh, for entry-level use of this program. View will let you adjust the rulers and toolbars that appear on the screen. You can also change the zoom if you want to see more of the document. But the bulk of the functions you'll use will be found over here under the insert tab. You can insert a new slide you can make a duplicate copy of a slide if you want to build off it and I don't use these options very much I don't think they're necessary for beginner level stuff but pic inserting pictures is definitely important you can insert pictures from file and as great as these are they are not what we'll be using so let's go to here and we're gonna double click each picture to insert it into our document so you go through, keep doing that. So we've got our emperors laid out on the page. You can click one of the pictures and then use these green boxes to shrink it. So you can fit them all neatly on the page. There we go. Now in Publisher, it's very easy to rotate pictures. You just double click it. That's not how it works in Draw. It's still easy though, you just need to know you go to view, go to toolbars, and then there's something called mode. Mode will give you this rotate option. So you click it, and now when you click these pictures, you'll have those dots where you can, you know, turn Genghis at an angle or Napoleon to make them really, you know, jump off the page. There you go. Okay. Also an insert, you can make a table. You can put movies and sound files in it, but uh, you probably won't need to do that. Objects, not really necessary for beginner use. You can also make a chart. But So the next thing you're going to want to do is insert some text here. You might think, okay, I'll go to insert, and what do I do? Well, it's not there. You have to go down in the bottom left where this T is, click where you want to type something, and type it here. Then, of course, you can click it, change the font size, make it bigger, just like in most programs. If 
you want to insert fancy letters, you can go down here to the font work gallery and select what type of font you want to use. Then you double click it and type in whatever message you want. This yellow button lets you change the angle of the word. So we'll fit it in something like that. There's also a lot of handy lines and shapes down here. Rectangles, circles. Um, if you click these down arrows, it gives you different options. It's a nice smiley face or a sad face. Different arrows. Or you can insert a speech bubble by clicking the call out button below and use the yellow dot to line it up with who you want to say something and then just type in your message. You can adjust this with the font features up above. You can make it bold. As for the rest of the tabs, we have format, character, paragraph, bullets, page, which you saw earlier. You can change the case that the text you're inserting is in. You can add lines around things or color the area behind it. You can also adjust the, the margins of text by using the text button. And over here in tools, the only thing I really use is I get rid of the gallery and use spell check occasionally. But other than that, I, these aren't really needed for entry level use. Modify, on the other hand, has a lot of useful features. We can rotate things you click the rotate button and then you can angle it however you want. You can flip images vertically, horizontally. The convert button has some interesting options. You can turn something into a 3D object. It's also handy to group objects. You just click and drag and highlight both things you want to turn into a group or hold the shift key and click each of them and then go to modify and group so we'll do that for Genghis here modify group Moctezuma and his speech bubble and Marcus grouping comes in handy if you want to align pictures and text so let's say we had everything laid out like this and we want them to be perfectly aligned down the middle you would click hold the shift key for each of them Go to Modify, Alignment, and Center. We could also align these images all along the left side with each other. It might be a little messy, but so we hold the Shift key for each of them. Go to Modify, Alignment, and Left. The Distribution feature is very handy if you want to evenly space things. So let's say we've got our pictures laid out like this. Hold the shift key so each of them is highlighted. Go to modify, distribution, and we're going to space these with equal horizontal spacing. And there you go. Last but not least is the arrange function. You can send objects to the front or back using this button. So let's say Moctezuma was saying his message, but he was behind Marcus Aurelius. You just click it. Go to Modify, Arrange, Bring to Front, and it moves it to the top layer. And those are the minimum functions you need to know to use Draw. It may be a little less easy to use than Microsoft Publisher, but it's totally free, and when Publisher 2013 costs $110 alone, it's definitely worth checking out. That does it for this tutorial. If you'd like to learn about another desktop publishing software, check out our intro to Microsoft Publisher. Thanks for watching.